It's Friday, and uh, my name's Al. I'm the Partner Products Manager over here at Bobcad. And today I wanted to take a look at using 3D Engrave to create some 3D toolpaths. So the first thing I wanted to do was open up this file. This part was drawn in SolidWorks, and we have a couple of, uh, couple of uh, shapes here. And we want to use this to create a 3D vacuum fixture. So the first thing I want to do is uh, align the geometry so that it's in the proper viewing plane. So I'll use utilities and then rotate. And I'll rotate this in 90 in X. And that will get it facing me. Uh, the next thing I want to do is utilities rotate and we'll rotate this minus 90 in Z. Now even though this isn't a necessary step because using the stock wizard uh, we can actually align our zero to the part regardless of what orientation it's in. It does help with the standard views which makes it easier to view the part. Now. The next thing I want to do, if you notice, this is considered uh, an entire solid. So what I want to do is stitching, unstitch solid to surfaces, and I want to break this down into, into individual surfaces, and then I just want to delete that top surface there. Okay. Now, from here, the next thing that I want to do is create the wireframe that I'm going to use for the machining process. So I'll add a new layer, okay. I'm gonna make that layer active, so I have the solid on one layer and nothing on this new layer I just created. And what I wanna do is extract the wireframe, or in SolidWorks they call it convert entities. So we'll do utilities, extract edges, single. And I'll pick on this top face right here. And then I'll right click okay. And now you can see I have the wireframe for that solid. I'm going to do uh, another group here where I'll select uh, these vertical lines. Just picking the edges. Okay. And then I'll create another layer here. We'll call this horizontal and I will select all my horizontal lines. And these uh, particular edges here will be used for an O-ring groove. And again, this is gonna be a vacuum uh, fixture. All right, so now we have a, a bunch of wireframe here. What I'm gonna do is turn on just layer number one and I'm just gonna select the things that I uh, want to delete because I don't really need that section there and again to select things what I'll do is go to a selection mode so that's right up here I can choose selection mode or I can right click and choose select and then to chain select you hold down shift left click on the geometry and then that will select it all uh, if it's connected and because it's a chain uh, it, it should be connected and then once I have it highlighted I can hit delete and it will go away. So that gives me that geometry. Uh, the next thing I want to do is turn on my vertical lines and from here I'm gonna group these together. We have a function called contour. I'm holding down shift and clicking on these lines that will group those together and then uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the horizontals here. I'll group those together. Okay, so now we have all of our geometry prepped. Uh, the next thing that we wanna do is run our stock wizard. So from here, we'll go to our cam tree. We're gonna go ahead and milling stock, stock wizard, rectangular. Next, uh, it just puts a box around the part, which is fine. We'll go ahead and choose next and then what we want to do is pick this corner here we want to pick this bottom uh, 
bottom corner of the part. So we're going to go ahead and choose origin and we'll click on that little dot right there. And the red arrow is X positive, so that's X positive. The green arrow is Y positive. If we wanted to switch it, we can choose this arrow here and we can switch our X axis direction or switch our Y axis direction. But actually the default is just fine, positive X, positive Y. We'll go ahead and choose OK. All right. So now we have our zero set up, we have our stock set up, and we have the geometry we want to work with set up. What I'll normally do from here is just turn down the transparency of the stock, and uh, that will display uh, our wireframe geometry. And then from here, I'm going to load in my three axis engraving, and then we'll choose next, select geometry. Now I'm going to turn off my other layers and I'm going to do this outside shape first. Uh, I, I held down shift to select that profile, then I'll hit spacebar to lock in the selection. I'll go ahead and define my tool. This one's going to be a 750 end mill. I have my speeds and feeds I can adjust over there. Uh, my parameters, this is going to be an eighth inch deep. When I go back to my tool, I may assign a tool holder. I uh, created this... Uh, this sample as my uh, kind of like a collet, collet holder or whatever, but you can always adjust those, but I'll grab that one. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit compute, and that will generate the tool path for that profile. Then I'm just gonna blank out that uh, tool path, and then I'll load another three axis engrave, select geometry. This time I'm gonna select this inside shape here, and I'm also going to select these vertical and these horizontal lines. Now, from there, I'll hit my spacebar to lock in the selection. Uh, this one I'm going to use a different size tool. I'll use a, a quarter inch uh, end mill. Okay. I'll grab my... Uh, it looks like I have that holder there. I'll set my depth and then I'll hit compute. So at this point we've gone ahead and programmed uh, our outside relief and our inside o-ring grooves and that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, if we want to load this up into a simulation we can go to module, modules and then mill simulation And this will load up. Right now, what it's doing is it's processing the model. It's trying to stitch all the surfaces together because it's going to pass it over to the simulation window. And, uh, you know, I have machine simulation in the, the multi-axis version that I'm running. If you're not running a multi-axis version, you would want to, you would see it in, in this view right here. So here we can see our solid uh, stock setup. Uh, I will turn off my initial stock. I will turn off my model. Usually I'd like to use the segmented uh, toolpath display, which is that one right there. I'll turn down the speed of this. Uh, we do have a bunch of reporting tools, but I'll go ahead and just play this through. And this will show our relief cut along the outside of the part. And then from there, we're going to see that uh, it's going to go ahead and trace this. Now you're going to see uh, some edges in red there. I actually slow this down really slow. If you notice, uh, the way that this tool is defined, only the tip of the tool is the flutes. So it's showing um, showing a collision with the shank of the cutter, but really there would be uh, flutes there. I think that's just how I define my tool. But anyways, it's going through and it's, uh, it's making its horizontals. It will go back and make its verticals. And there you go. This gives us our uh, the tooling that we needed for this uh, vacuum 
uh, fixture. So after we're done with all of this and we're happy with the simulation, if we want to post our program, we'll come over to Milling Tools, right click and post. And this will generate the G code to go ahead and run our routine. Once we have our G code, we can right click Save As, and then we could save this uh, file out uh, to be used with our machine. So that's today's uh, quick lesson on using 3D Engrave for 3D profiling. Hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you have a great weekend and look forward to uh, talking to you guys soon. Thank you so much.